Hello. Um, we're going to tie a fly that um, someone had requested. Um, I know when I started fly fishing, when I was a kid, I was a big fan of it. Not for any particular reason, just that uh, it was a really popular wet fly back then. And uh, I always really liked the color and whatever. I just always thought it was a nice fly. Um, we're going to do a dark Montreal wet fly. I don't fish these too often, but uh, I do like to tie them. Um, we're going to start with, we're going to put a base of uni A dot black thread down. There's a lot of people with different opinion on thread. I can't see why anyone would want to use I mean, I guess you could get, you can get Vivas makes some really small threads, but I don't think there's anything better than uh, Uni. Um, all right, so this usually, I think this pattern calls for a, a gold tag, like a bud on the end with flat silver tinsel. But I don't really have anything that small, so I'm just going to leave it off. I don't normally, I wouldn't normally put it on if I was tying this fly anyway. But uh, I believe it does call for that. So what we're going to do is I have a uh, Claret, just a hen neck saddle. These are pretty cheap. Like I think this was probably seven bucks or something. Um, so I took a, some barbules off of one of the feathers. And we are going to tie that in the back somewhere around the length of the hook shank. We're just going to pinch that, hold it on top of the hook. And just catch that stuff. We're going to be tying in a floss body, so we're really going to try and keep everything kind of under control underneath. It'll make, uh, make your floss job a lot easier if you try and be a little meticulous with your thread and anything else you're tying in underneath it. I can try I'm not doing quite touch and turns, but pretty close. And look, the floss will lay over that, no problem. I'm going to go back up. And I'm going to tie in some gold tinsel for the rib. Again, I think this calls for uh, a flat gold tinsel, but I'm going to use a uh, uh, medium uni French gold. I tied one earlier with a small and I just didn't quite like the look at it. So I hope this doesn't look too big, which is maybe worse, but we're going to give it a try. Anyway, I want to keep this the full length of the body, like I said, because of the, the floss. It's really easy to make a floss body lumpy if you're inconsiderate with your stuff you tie in underneath it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie my floss in at the front and work it all the way back and then back up to the front of the hook. So the floss I'm using is uh, Danville's four strand rayon. That's uh, I like this stuff lays down pretty nice. It's a lot better. Uni makes like a one strand tinsel and it is trash. It makes my heart hurt when I see people tie with it, but I mean, I, I have some, but like this is just so much better. So that's a four strand and I just took, uh, stripped it down to two strands and uh, that'll be lots for this fly. Four strand is a lot. Rarely do I, there'd have to be a pretty big fly for me to, uh, use all four strands. So we're going to catch this in. Normally I'd use a little bit of wax but I, on my thread, but I just kind of cleaned up down here and I have no idea where it is. So we're just going to try and wrap this nice and flat. You don't really want to wet your fingers because it will affect the floss, but I just normally try and dampen it just to try and keep everything, keep all the 
loose hairs and little stragglers in check. So we're going to work our way back just with touching turns, trying to keep everything as smooth as possible. I know uh, I actually built a little boat yesterday, a little plywood john boat. So my uh, I haven't worked since uh, March 13th, so my hands were kind of soft and now they're torn to shreds from doing manual labor for a day, but it doesn't help the floss thing. Anyway, it's fine. So you just want to be very careful too that a lot of times what happens is your uh, your floss will slip out of your hand and it'll uncoil. That's not a great thing either. So this is kind of, and this isn't a, this is a far from perfect floss body too, but one of the purpose of this fly that I probably am going to fish just for something different, um, that's absolutely fine. So I'll snip that off, get in nice and tight. Uh, all right, now I just have a little bump. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a little tiny bump right at the very end. I'm going to try and uh, just smush that in with my thumbnail. a little better. So now we're going to try and do five even wraps. This is a tricky part when you're starting to do this too. But I don't really have any rhyme or reason for how I get it to work out. But I think it's just a practice thing. It's hard, especially filming videos, because like I'm not watching the side of the tinsel that's facing the camera, so it's easy for me to think my side looks great, and then to have the camera side look like trash, but that is about as good as that gets on the opposite side. All right, we'll snip this tinsel, bring it nice and close. Oh, I just cut my thread. Dang it, that's minor. That happens. Not the first time I've done that, and will not be the last. And we're back in business. We got pretty lucky that time. Sometimes that can be catastrophic. Especially with like these scissors aren't, they're kind of getting worn out. But with, uh, with brand new scissors, Especially like a razor scissor or something, there uh, you can do a lot of damage. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take for our throat. It's the next thing we're gonna tie in. Um, I'm gonna take a feather here, and pluck one out. What I like to do for these little wet flies, instead of just taking a clump of barbules, I come in and snip that out. So this is what I'm left with. So what I'll do, I'll leave I don't know, that even might be a little much, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So what you want to do is tie this in just with a few loose wraps underneath and just try and pull straight out until you have 
the throat to let the oil on it. Which is right around the hook point. So that's all right. That's not a great looking throat, but that's all right. Slip that off. Twist it a little bit, but now the key to get a nice head that's probably even. <laughs> A lot more wraps on the head than I would have liked to put, but just had a little debris on the go there. So the next thing we're going to tie in is the wing, um, which is, uh, this is model turkey, I guess. Just uh, matching slips off of a pair. These are white tip. These are, I uh, actually got these out of eBay from a guy in New Jersey who I bought a bunch of classic sand fly materials from and uh, he got them at, got these feathers at an estate sale and they're very well could be a hundred years old by the, the other stuff that I got. It's kind of neat. But they're not, uh, they're not in that great shape. So I'm going to say just want the wing a little bit past the uh, the bend of the hook. So what you want to try to do is make like a little you want one just sort of on the other side of the other of the hook. So what I like to do is you pinch it really hard, put some saliva on your slips, and then you take one kind of loose wrap, and pinch it through with your fingers, and then pull up. Now, the crucial part is not letting go of the feathers while you check. Like you can pretty well tell if everything is straight from just looking at this. So let's see how he did. That's not super duper, but that's not terrible. It's probably a little, yeah, that's a little better. You can kind of manipulate the the shape of the, the wing with a little persuasion. So we're gonna, that's wrapped on nice and tight. Just snip that it off. And we'll tidy up the head a little bit here. fuzz from the feathers. It's not terrible. It looks all right. So now we'll whip finish. A lot of the uh, folks of the old school will say you should be doing this by hand, and some of them will even argue that it's more accurate to do it by hand. I will fight that to the death. There is no way you can do it. Maybe, I guess, but I... Whip finisher is way more accurate, in my opinion. Not that it's any harder to do it by hand or anything, like, really, if you want accuracy. 
I don't think there's any other way. So we'll just try it. Tent that up a little bit. Still not great, but that's a little better. I can live with that. Same thing with this with the philosophy. Your head just kind of has a has a little lump in it. You can maneuver that with your thumbnail. Now this is a Vineyard Solar. This is a the old Brian Freeman Bodkin, which uh, is a great thing because it makes you put on the cap of your head cement so you don't knock it over. That said, last night I was just tying a fly down here. And uh, dumped an entire thing of it onto my lap. So it's not completely foolproof. But yeah, if you get a toothpick, if you have one of these, toothpick will fit. There's a little hole in the your toothpick, fits perfect. So we'll just do the best we can in it. Shaping a nice head on this thing. Kind of cool that this is a Canadian pattern. I don't know a whole lot about it, but uh, just what I googled when I went to tie it to make sure my version wasn't completely a butcher job of it. Try and focus in on that. That's not going to work. Anyway, you'll see the better picture in the thumbnail or whatever. So that's that. Dark material. That was. Uh, I like that fly. I feel like the video doesn't do it justice. Hopefully, the picture does. You can kind of see that the the tinsel ribs aren't perfect, but that's fine. Anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate all the feedback. If you have any requests, just uh, send me a message. It's uh, I tie pretty well everything. So if you want to see salmon flies, bass flies, whatever, we can keep going with trout flies. No difference to me. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you later.